Hello and welcome to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Mario Scabello of the 176th District in Monroe County. Summer camps are vital for the investments that they make financially and socially to our communities. As Chairman of the Labor and Industry Committee, I recently held a hearing on House Bill 858. This bill would exempt summer camps from paying unemployment taxes on full-time students that they employed during the camping season. Currently, these camps must pay unemployment taxes for students who would be disqualified for benefits as soon as they return to school in the fall. This additional expense is estimated at between five and six thousand dollars per year. On today's program, I'd like to share portions of the hearing with you. Testimony was heard from members of both the Wayne County Camp Association and the Pennsylvania Camp Association. Please take a moment to listen to their comments. We're going to start out this morning with Representative Sandy Major, who is the prime sponsor of uh, House Bill 858, to give us a brief description of the legislation. Thank you, uh, Chairman Scavello, and good morning uh, to everyone. Good morning, Representative Keller. Thank you so much for coming up this morning. And uh, Representative Scavello, thank you so much for holding this hearing for House Bill 858. Summer camps have been a tradition in the United States since the early 1900s and provide millions of children with opportunities to make new friends, learn a skill, develop an interest, gain greater confidence and independence, and get back in touch with nature. According to the National Camp Association, there are nearly 12,000 camps in the United States where more than 11 million children and adults attending camp each summer. Pennsylvania boasts hundreds of summer camp programs which require an extensive part-time workforce, typically students, to operate. It is this summer workforce that my legislation focuses on. House Bill 858 would amend the Pennsylvania Unemployment Compensation Law to exempt organized summer camps from paying unemployment taxes on full-time students that they might employ. Current law requires these camps to pay unemployment contributions on the wa wages of students who are virtually certain to be precluded from qualifying for unemployment benefits when they return to school. It is estimated by the Pennsylvania Camp Association that these camps pay an additional $5,000 to $6,000 per year to comply with the current law. We are not the only state to have this inconsistency in the law, and in fact, the language in my legislation directly reflects language from New York State unemployment compensation law. By passing this legislation, we can correct an oversight in current law and save our valuable summer camp organizations money needed to serve the thousands of children they host each year. Again, my sincere thanks for, to the chairman for hosting this uh, meeting this morning, and I look forward to the testimony that we will hear. Thank you. I am a representative of Camp Tawanda, which is up in Honesdale, Pennsylvania. And I also serve on the executive board of the Pennsylvania Camp Association. I'm the facilitator today representing uh, a series of statewide camp organizations throughout the state of Pennsylvania who have come together to share information with you about our industry. We're a unique group that provides our communities within the Commonwealth with a considerable economic, social, and philanthropic resource which impacts millions of people. Our speakers today will be sharing information on the dynamics of our industry, the dollar impact of what we bring to all areas when campers, their parents, staff are with us. The millions of dollars can't pay to local school taxes annually without receiving any services, the local workers we employ annually and seasonally, the local businesses that derive a significant amount of their annual revenue from camps, in some cases more than 50% of their annual income. When we build and expand our properties, we pay more into the general tax fund. The philanthropy we provide in donations to hospitals, fire companies, ambulance corps, scholarships to local children, as well as military families. We train our young staff, high school and college students, in areas that prepare them for their future in human services, mental health, and social work. The amount of internships that we get for students throughout the state of Pennsylvania and other states around the country who come in and work for us provide future investment into what we do. We're educational in terms of who we are, but virtually receive very, very little relief in terms of taxes. Camps in PA are a disadvantage to our competitors in states like New York, Massachusetts, and Maine 
in that they have additional funding to reinvest in their facilities. They are not paying into the unemployment fund. We have all felt the financial crisis of 2007 through 2010 and the concern we had our businesses would not survive the recession. And sadly, some are no longer operating. The money camps pay into the unemployment fund is far less than the value of what we provide to our community statewide. And passing this bill will help us do even more for our region. I'll be brief. My name's Andy Siegel. I'm the director and owner of Tyler Hill Camp, also up in, in Wayne County. I'm also the co-president of the Wayne County Camp Alliance and, uh, and a board member of the American Camp Association. Um, you know, my goal to, is to take a couple of minutes and, and really piggyback a little bit on what Mark said, but to talk to you a little bit about what it is we do. I think there is a, um, I think there's a belief when people hear summer camp that it's an opportunity for kids to really go out there and play and, uh, and, and to sort of learn some, some, uh, some skills on, on ball fields and in arts and crafts. When in fact what we're doing is we're preparing kids today. We're teaching kids real values and, uh, and preparing them to become great adults down, down the road. Um, our industry, our industry as a whole, regardless of the type of camps that we run, it is to teach kids the skills of making and keeping friends. It's to teach kids how to feel good about themselves. It's to send kids home, regardless of their age, in September more prepared to tackle their next school year. And on top of that, we're doing the same thing for our 18, 19, and 20-year-old staff that come each year. Um, camps have been around for an awful long time, and uh, I believe in just Pennsylvania we have about 600 camps. Um, what we do is so much more than provide an opportunity for kids to play sports and to, and to learn crafts. We're teaching children real life skills that they're going to go back home with, that they're going to take with them for the rest of their lives. And, and I think that is, that's my message to, to you guys today. Thank you. I actually started at camp as an eight-year-old camper uh, in 1996, and I never stopped going. I absolutely loved it. And uh, what I'm going to bring today is just uh, let everyone know that I I'm doing the, the programming at Tyler Hill, and uh, my responsibility is to send campers, staff, um, and our whole team uh, to you know, trips and local businesses. And I just wanted to just uh, point out some things that we've done, and not just at Tyler Hill, but as a camp alliance. Um, I know I speak to them, you know, a lot of people behind me all year, and ever since a child, it, it seems as if, you know, we're only five minutes away from New York, but it, it was a very conscious decision to keep things in Pennsylvania and let the staff and the kids learn to love and, you know, make it their second home. So just some things that we do uh, on day trips and overnight trips are send people down to Philly, um, Dorney and Hershey Park, um, we use our local bakeries, and we send our, uh, you know, our staff six nights a week to Hohensdale or to Scranton, things like that. And um, I just wanted to say on my end that on behalf of, I guess, you know, not just Tyler Hill, but the whole you know, Camping Association, that uh, you know, camp has been a great place, and we want to continue you know, to send people and have them learn all about Pennsylvania and keep the revenue up. And, I uh, really greatly appreciate all of you guys letting me uh, have the opportunity to speak today. Yeah, I just want to mention that, you know, especially in, in Monroe County, we, we purchased a tremendous amount of land for open space that we spent taxpayer dollars to buy. And I'm assuming that Pike County and Wayne, all of the land that you are, have your camps on, if that was developed into housing and the effect that it would have on a school district and the taxes that you're paying, uh, it's a significant number. I had, I'd, I'd probably have a full head of hair if I if you could put those numbers together, but it's, it would be a significant amount of money. My family operates three summer camps in Pennsylvania. One of my brothers operates Lake Greeley Camp in uh, Pike County. Uh, my other brother operates Camp Cayuga in Honesdale. I direct Camp Lohican, which is located up uh, in the northeast corner, about three miles from the Delaware River up in Lake Como. Uh, my parents started the camp in 1957. Uh, this will be our 56th year in operation, and the third generation, uh, my family's been in the camping business. Uh, many private summer camps are family-owned and operated. Uh, we are a residential summer camp, a sleepaway camp where children of the ages 5 through 15 attend for anywhere between 2 and 8 weeks. At Camp Lohican, the kids get to choose their activities. 
uh, which include more than 65 art, sports, and adventure activities, everything from circus, trapeze, tennis, golf. We have about 450 kids in camp, in Camp Lohican, one of the camps. Um, and they travel from 20 different states and 15 different countries. Most of our children come from the tri-state area of New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. Uh, we do have kids from Pennsylvania, but, but the vast majority of our kids are from outside the state. Uh, we employ 240 staff members, at least 50% of whom are full-time college students. Um, these college enrolled counselors are integral to our operation. Uh, they're young enough to uh, connect uh, with our kids, but they're old enough and mature enough to assume responsibilities for their supervision in the cabin and at activity sites. Currently, these full-time students, as you know, are exempt from federal unemployment taxes, uh, but when they work in Pennsylvania, they have to pay the taxes, and so do we. In this economy, competition for campers and quality staff members is stiff. The two states that provide the most competition for Pennsylvania camps are New York and Maine. Both of these stamp states exempt full-time students from unemployment taxes, essentially for the same reason that the federal government does. Full-time students can't qualify uh, to receive uh, unemployment benefits, and, and that's the reason why the, the taxes were uh, being collected. It seems to me that that's only fair. With a tight economy, every dollar counts. Our non-tax exempt status in Pennsylvania creates an unfair advantage for summer camps located in other states, namely Maine and New York in our instance. We compete directly for campers and quality staff members with summer camps in states which exempt camps from unemployment uh, taxes. If full-time students were exempted from un unemployment taxes in Pennsylvania, I could tell you that the dollars that would be freed up would be invested in increasing the value of our summer camp experience, essentially making us more competitive. Since staffing is a key element in providing a successful, valuable summer camp experience, staffing is where a lot of our money would go, in our case, along with facility enhancements, which means more money spent in Pennsylvania and locally. As far as our business is concerned, most of our camp revenue is generated from outside the state of Pennsylvania. Most of the revenue that we collect is spent in the state of Pennsylvania. Assuming that most camps are like Camp Lohican, it stands to reason that the state of Pennsylvania has an interest in helping Pennsylvania summer camps compete more effectively with camps outside the area. The Pennsylvania economy would obviously be helped if we bring more money into the state from outside the state. Relief from unemployment taxation for full-time students would help us in this regard. In conclusion, it's my belief that exempting full-time students from unemployment taxation is not only fair, it's also economically prudent for the state of Pennsylvania. Camp Wayne uh, started in 1921, and it's been in my family since the 50s, so we're a proud, uh, just like Mark, a third generation uh, camp family. Um, uh, while camps are certainly best known for the seven and eight week programs that we run during the summer, uh, I wanted to touch on some of the other programs that the directors behind me and, and all the other directors in, uh, in the Alliance are equally committed to as far as uh, programs for children and youth development. Um, camps support organizations like SCOPE and Project Mori, which provide uh, financial assistance to children to attend summer camps um, all, over the, all over the East Coast, certainly Pennsylvania and New York. Um, as, as Mark Zides mentioned in, in his opening statement, uh, there are camps, uh, uh, Island Lake, uh, who are represented behind me today, who have a program that sponsors uh, active military families, um, where they get to return to camp year after year. There are organizations like Focus for a Future, which uh, camps in Wayne County, Wayne Camp Wayne included, open uh, slots for children coming from areas in uh, New York, 
um, to attend camp. Uh, th these are children who would not otherwise have an opportunity to, to come to camp. So these are just a few, you know, regional and even in some, some extent national organizations that the county, the camps in the county are, are supportive of throughout the year. Uh, and there are also a number of uh, local uh, initiatives that uh, camps are involved in. At Camp Wayne, uh, we host the uh, Wayne Highlands and Susquehanna districts Hooked on Fishing, Not Drugs program. Uh, the children come to camp, uh, spend the day with us fishing. We provide a lunch for the children. Um, we also run a program called the Preston Hancock Experience. Uh, these are uh, it's, it's a, a tuition-free, week-long day camp program for kids in our community um, who get to basically experience what, what camp is all about. And again, these are children who would never have the opportunity um, to attend camp. So uh, we're, as I said before, we're equally as proud of those, of those accomplishments and our commitment uh, to those programs. And those are just, you know, a couple from a few different camps. And if you, um, if we had all day, which I know we don't, to, to, to look at all the camps in the Alliance and the things that they do in the community, I think you'd be amazed at the, the number of programs and, and the commitment from these camps to, to youth development. It's not just the, the few hundred children that we get to uh, take care of and, as Andy said, turn them into um, adults who are going to be great contributors to society, but it's, uh, it's, it's expanding to, to kids who wouldn't have an opportunity. So it's something that I know we're all uh, very proud to support um, in the county and I'm sure uh, throughout the state of Pennsylvania. Now, how many uh, other employees are at the organization? At our specific camp? Yes. Uh, I would say that would be affected by this particular bill or just in general? That would be affected by this bill. Uh, well, I guess both. Let's start I would with say uh, probably th 300 staff. Um, out of that, you'd think maybe uh, somewhere around 100 could be college, you know, would, would be affected by this, by this bill. Okay. And is that reflective of other camps? Yes, that's fairly consistent. Depending upon the numbers of students that attend, ratios are, are, are very small. We're very proud within all of our organizations that the ratio goes uh, beyond what's set aside by the state and what's set aside by the American Camp Association. Mm -hmm. So that uh, uh, a ratio of, of, of five to one camper to staff is somewhat uh, in the average within the organizations that we represent. Okay. Thank you. Well, and I think that goes also to uh, some of the discrepancy that we had been hearing earlier. Some of the numbers that the labor industry provided were much lower. Um, so, I mean, hearing these numbers uh, also said, shed some light on, on this conversation. So, thank you. Great. Uh, I come to you as a representative today of the Wayne County Camp Alliance, as well as the director of Camp Wayne for Girls, uh, the sister half to the Camp Wayne for Boys of Josh Corpuel, who was just up here. We have uh, been in business since 1921, slowly coming upon our 100-year anniversary as a continually running summer camp, something that we are very proud of. Um, I'm just going to speak very briefly today and piggyback some of the sentiments that Josh had mentioned um, about some of the uh, charitable and philanthropic contributions that we have to our local community, as well as um, some of the economic impact. Um, our camps and businesses have been able to provide many local jobs for local students, um, many local opp work opportunities for local students that would otherwise not have the opportunity to find work in the area many, many times. Um, and a camp job is often a, a, a different experience than many other sort of um, quote unquote typical jobs. At camp, you know, you're really learning some dynamic skills. At the end of the day, life and most jobs are about working with people and camp does people better than anybody, than any other industry that I know. And so we're often exposing these local um, students and employees to a very dynamic and challenging and engaging work environment, which they can then take these skills onward with them in life. Um, furthermore, um, many camp jobs, um, somewhat ironically, as dynamic as they are and as um, as beneficial as they can be, very often are so fantastic because they don't often require prior experience. We're able to hire people um, locally and non-locally um, where you don't necessarily need to have an ex you know, a tremendous amount of experience. Um, there's a camp in a position that fits every personality. Um, and like I said, many of the skills that, that campers and counselors are learning at camp, uh, learning to think out of the box, so to speak, um, people's skills, 
um, really more 21st century thinking than some of the rote skills that we've been learning in the past. Um, I also want to just briefly touch on some of the, um, the chair, uh, some of the other impacts we have in the local community is clearly we also are able to hire and employ local contractors, builders. We hire, we, we, we purchase a lot of our food from local vendors, including local farmers. Um, moving on to some of the more charitable aspects that we do that Josh has touched on. Uh, many of our camps donate our facilities uh, throughout the year to the local community for things such as weddings. Um, Josh mentioned that we do run a, a free camp for local children in our community after each fall. Um, many, um, certainly in my camp, and I know uh, many of my uh, colleagues as well, uh, we open up our facilities, our lakes, our wooded areas for hunting, for fishing. Um, we happen to run uh, a few local charity camps at my camp, and now there's four victims of 9-11, uh, a bereavement camp for children that have lost loved ones um, um, and other uh, charitable. So these, so it's much more than just uh, the, the camping business. Our tentacles and our effect and, and the effect of our businesses do have a, a very positive ripple effect into the community. Passing this legislation, I think, would allow us to take some of these funds and hire more local contractors, hire another person or two to further uh, extend the benefits of the camping industry. We represent um, Monroe County Camp Association, and we also represent uh, two camps, International Sports Training Camp and International Gymnastics Camp. We'll, uh, I think we'll do our best to be brief, and uh, I think the, the merits of camping have been fully covered, so we'll go right to the math aspect of it. Between the two camps, we employ uh, roughly 350 people plus, and out of that, we're probably in that same average, anywhere from 75 to 100 staff members fit this criteria that we're discussing today. Um, we obviously do our best to provide a lot of local jobs. We have a lot of local kids uh, right around the camp and right around the facility who work for us uh, that this directly impacts. Um, I even think that it's worth mentioning that local municipalities see the, um, the advantages of, of certain tax breaks right now. As you all know or may not know, uh, Camelback Mountain is in the process of putting up a $145 million building and all of the locals, local uh, uh, municipalities have given them tax breaks in order to help them because obviously the creation of jobs in 2012, we built a new camper cabin, uh, creating a lot of local jobs. This year we're building a new staff cabin, again creating all local jobs and there's a lot of kids working on that, that site. And in 2014, we're planning on moving forward with the building a new cafeteria, again, creating new jobs, and I guess it's worth mentioning that because I think there's a spillover that the people that we hire also, uh, you know, can potentially be affected by this bill. Um, and I think I'll pass it on to Kara at this point. She has some more specific things that she can discuss. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for um, having us here today. Much appreciated. I wanted to speak a little bit about the solvency issue because I know that that's a question that's been raised. I have a circumstance where last month I got a notice in the mail for um, a notification that an employee was filing for unemployment. And this employee had left us in January for, to take another job. So I was surprised to receive the notification and I did appeal and say that we would be very happy to have this employee back with us. She was a great worker um, and please let me know what I need to do. And I was surprised again when I received that my appeal was denied and that she would still be eligible for unemployment compensation. So at that point, I did reach out to Representative Scavello and he did encourage me to appeal it again. And in that process, we met with a mediator, uh, or I, I'm not sure if a mediator is, is the proper term, um, and we also sent her a contract by certified mail offering her her job back again. So after the mediation process, I was shocked to find out that our appeal was again denied and she was available to receive unemployment compensation and that's where it sits at this very moment. 
It was based upon the fact that she left work for another job. And because of that fact alone, she is uh, possible to, she is relevant to receive unemployment compensation. The fact that we offered her her job back and additional hours and sent her a contract had no bearing whatsoever on the claim. <clears throat> One of the reasons she would be eligible is if the second job she went to paid significantly more than your job. She would not have to return to a job that paid that much less. That's part of. I have the paperwork. We were paying $12 an hour, and she's now earning $15 an hour. Um, but it, the mediator actually said this should have never come to me. Unemployment compensation at the Allentown office should have denied it for other reasons. I have all the paperwork if you need to see it. This is happening, and, and that's, this is different than this bill. This is a and different I, I respect that, but I did want to, if, you know, in, in so many cases, the, what we could, the good that we could do for the community and for our local charities and for our local jobs with this money, and I know solvency is a question for you that you'd raise, so that's why I wanted to bring it up. We've heard today from people who are contributors, who are givers, people who believe in our community, okay? We have quite a few folks that are no longer in business. Okay, and they're no longer in business based upon the recession. They're no longer in business because of other aspects that have deterred their operations to, to actually exist. We're different and we're unique. Our industry is very, very special. You've heard the testimony from people on what we provide, what we provide our world. And it goes beyond Pennsylvania in terms of the life skills, in terms of, prep, of, terms of the preparation for the future. Okay. Uh, who is going to join in on this law should it be passed? I'm not concerned about the, vi the, the ice cream vendor who comes along to say we want to get in on this as well. If the ice cream vendor wants to contribute the way we contribute to our community, to our state, and to our government, then I say let them make their pitch. But I can tell you now, if we lose out on some of the funding that we can get back to put things back into the communities, our world around us is going to be that much less effective and involved because of all the money that we put in. So the contributions that we make, I think, far surpass whatever the amount that your fund works it out to be. Uh, because for the, for the $31 million that Tom Shepstone mentioned from 10 years ago, if camps continue to close, that's that much less for what the states will be able to bring in in terms of revenue. Look, just looking at the acreage of land that you have and just um, then the taxes that are paid to, this co to the communities that you're in, earned income tax to the communities that, that, that you're in, um, it's just unbelievable. Um, we're going to look at this very closely. You have, you know, I'm going to tell you we're going to look at it very closely. Um, we we want to certain, first of all, that those numbers are accurate. And secondly, uh, what the worry of uh, Representative Keller is that, uh, that, we'll, that we will we'll, we'll be opening up other doors and that we need to be very careful about. That's all the time we have for today's program. I'm State Representative Mario Scabello. If you have any questions of what you've just seen or need assistance with any state-related matter, feel free to contact me at my local office or through my website. That information will be shown in a moment. Thanks for watching and please join me next time for Legislative Report.